All right, uh, great, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayemba, Director of Africa for the Africans, uh, Tourism Investment. Uh, this is a company I started in 2006, and we've been doing business uh, continuously up until now, 2018, so that's 12 years strong. And our uh, main focus has been to reconnect Africans in the diaspora to the Africans on the continent uh, so we can connect uh, for nation-building purpose and pan-Africanism. Now let me tell you a little bit, uh, about, a bit about my background before I get into our, our, company, our, our company operation. I was born in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, October 31st, 1977. I just uh, turned uh, 41. Uh, I lived in Jamaica for 11 years and I remember my fond memories of Jamaica just like when I come to Ghana to see this beautiful, rich country. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when you live in a country uh, like uh, Jamaica, sometimes the opportunities aren't there for you and you, you and your family have to make a move. So, um, beautiful island, a lot of things going on, uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, my parents say that, you know, we need to make a move and do certain things and try to build a career, build a, build a, career, build a future. So, our family moved to Brooklyn, New York in uh, 1988, December of 1988. So next month, uh, we'll make uh, 30 years since I've been in this, uh, I've been in America, ka, 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 ka. So uh, once I got to New York City, uh, it's, it was just like a culture shock. And you know, a culture shock, but at the same time, too, you know, you're thankful for an opportunity. So I did my best, uh, my studies and everything. I went to a technical high school called Transit Tech High School. And that's where I started my world of technology, where I learned electrical and electronic systems. And I also played soccer for four years and ran track and field. And uh, during the whole time um, I was in high school, I just, I was trying to look for what I was gonna do um, my future, you know, it's always a thing where everybody wants you to go to college and get these degrees and and make a lot of money and enjoy life. Yeah. I was looking for a good way to leave Brooklyn and I just wasn't feeling university and college at that moment. And a Marine recruiter came up to me when I was on my way to class one day in the summertime of, uh, of uh, 1995, uh, which is the year I graduated high school. And uh, he was just telling me about the Marine Corps and all the wonderful opportunities that the military had to offer. And I was like, um, and it just really was something I, th I thought about that that's going to give me a good opportunity to leave. Um, nevertheless, I, I took the, the ASVAB test. I took it the first time, got a decent score. Then I took it again and got a better score. And uh, when I went into then I, I started to think about a different type of operation. And I ended up joining the Navy because uh, the Navy recruiter, smooth people. They was like, oh, well, you want to go shoot guns or you want to do this? They showed me all kind of operation with aviation, land, air, sea, and this, this showed me, you know, told me about a great opportunity to, you know, to build a career and all the advent, uh, all of the opportunities and all of the, the great, uh, you know, the great things I can set up my future for. So I joined, uh, went in around beginning of 2000, sorry, excuse me, 1996. And I did about four and a half years. I was stationed in Virginia for the most part. I uh, worked on a, an air base, uh, Naval Air Station Oceana, which is in Virginia Beach. And I spent a good, a good uh, three and a half years on that uh, base, uh, maybe a little bit more. And I did go out to sea for six months um, from a ship that was based in San Diego and went out to like the west back of the world. So that started my international travels, which uh, to this day, I've been able to travel to six continents and 33 countries. But the, the, the energy in the military was, it taught me a lot about professionalism, logistics, uh, put a lot of money in my pocket. And this you know, great, gave me this great opportunity to build a future that you know, I'm building right now. And you know, sometimes you know, the military is one of the situations, not for everybody, but at the same time too, you know, if you can, if you can you know, tough it out, it, it puts you in a position where once you get out, you, you, know, you see the world a lot different. So I got out, I went to aircraft maintenance school and got my uh, certification, because that's what I did in the Navy. I work on uh, F-14 and F-18 uh, jet engines and the aircraft itself. And even worked on the aircraft, uh, the aircraft carrier which I was stationed in. So all of that was just a lot of experience around being around a lot of different people, different race, different culture. And, uh, once, uh, and, that, that, and once um, I was in Virginia now, and I got my certification, I got a good opportunity from a Delta Airline company that was able to get that aircraft maintenance position. And I moved to South, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia area in a city called Riverdale. And now I'm in a city called Jonesboro. 
you know, while I was working aircraft maintenance and having the flight benefits, I started opening up my eyes to get a passport and then started doing traveling. And I met some good people in Atlanta. The way I started, we started doing study groups and friends uh, started sharing books with me about black consciousness and black power and all kind of things that I've never been exposed to. And it just connected with me. And I think it connected with me because once I went to the South, the racism got real. Like I've never got, I just never, well, I think I got more awoke to it, but um, I worked around redneck mechanics. Who parents teach them to hate black people and they teach them that we're, you know, we you know, are not on the level, all kind of things. So you feel that. So I was looking for a way out and I saw the bit of my travel experience. Uh, I went to the African continent for the first time in 2004. And I went to uh, Senegal and I also went to Egypt. And that really just built my foundation from there. In 2005, went to Samoa, well, went to Senegal, and also uh, South Africa and, and Kenya. Uh, 2006, that's, that brought me into the tropical year. I went to the Gambia, which is one of my favorite countries that I've never been able to get a group of people to go with me. But uh, I ended up going to Ghana in December of 2006. And that's two months after we started our business, which is in October of 2006 called Africa for Africans uh, and we did the paperwork, get everything together and I started reaching out to my co-workers and friends and we was able to build our first group of, it was eight of us in December 2006. So then uh, about 10 months later, we did another tour, it was October 2007 and it was um, our second largest group, it was 42 of us. And I mean, that one trip from Ghana has changed my life. I just felt like this is where I belong. Uh, I was coming to the end of my uh, aircraft maintenance career where I just didn't want to work for these white devils anymore. Uh, so, and I mean, people hear me use this terminology, but I'm telling them, I had some world of experience around people. Especially when you work in the aircraft maintenance department and you're one of the few black people, and then you got all the ambition in the world, and people don't want to give you the schools you deserve, they want to cut you out opportunities, they want to give you, you know, so I realized that made me to use all my skills and background and do something for myself. So the first business I actually really started was Bomani Technology. I learned all the ins and outs out of fixed computers, network, troubleshoot, based on my aircraft maintenance skills. So that business was started actually in 2005, literally uh, in February, literally a year and a half before um, I started Africa for Africans. And the technology business started first because once I started traveling to Africa, I, needed, I realized that all the pictures and videos that we take in, you really want to upload them online. And, and, and share them or make, uh, at that point we were doing videotapes. I mean, I'm not sure if you remember the VHS tapes, but that's why I put the first set of documentaries of all these countries I went to, because every time I went to our country, I did the same thing, it's recorded everything. It's just now that since we're in the YouTube age, we've been uploading, we've been uploading a lot of, uh, a lot of footage uh, online, and that's, that has built the popularity. Uh, but it's ultimately the best way to share things. Uh, you know, you have a few DVDs and things, you, know, you can, you know, you can get around, but ultimately just having things online is a better way to connect with our folks. So from our 2007 to all the way to 2015, we're do, uh, 2016, we're doing annual October tours. Just basically one tour every year. Uh, the only year that I didn't go to Africa was 2010, uh, which we changed that tour from October 2010 to July of 2011. And then we also did October of 2011. Um, once, um, once things start, once the marketing and things started developing a little bit more, I was able to really just take things to another level in 2017, where we started doing multiple tours, uh, one in May and one in November to Africa. Also did even a Brazil tour. So we're at a point where in 2018, we have a May and a November Ghana tour. And the Ghana tour was, I'm supposed to actually be in Ethiopia right now, but I tried very hard and I couldn't get, I only got about three or four people that want to go to Ethiopia with me. But as soon as I changed the dates, and say, are we gonna go to Ghana? Yeah, for the last five months, I've literally been busy all day, all night. To the point where by seven o'clock, I'm in in the house and I'm in. I don't think I've even seen nightlight since I got back from Atlanta on the last trip in, uh, from Ghana when I came back in June. But uh, the energy is based on the fact that you know, this, you know, being inspired by Marcus Garvey and all of our ancestors that were dedicated to us and just being around certain situations, you know, I realized that you know, we need to be more committed to us. You know, we spend a lot of time 
committing ourselves to other people, doing for other people. So when people ask me why, you know, why you do all these things, uh, you have a business that is catered, to, you have two businesses catered directly to your brothers and sisters. I was like, that that's what we have to build. And I have a young boy, little Bomani, eight years old. And you know, my goal is to make sure he never has to work for any of these white devils ever again. Because I don't want him to ever go through what I went through, being tortured, disrespected, and treated terribly. And you know, some of us have these experiences, and some of us uh, don't. It just really depends. But it's just a mark of when we have to just realize that that's how you know the rest of the world is going to do. They they're, they're going to just exploit us as a people. So the only way, only thing that we can do is uh, black African people is. It's to really just deal with each other and do things for ourselves at the highest level. And that's why we're pushing these uh, communities uh, here in Ghana so we can assist our own brothers and sisters to repatriate and us just build a union together. So it's it's been an incredible journey and I just thank all of my brothers and sisters, the 360 people that have traveled me to the African continent uh, for just the support and the love. It's just been incredible. Um, this, and for trusting me with all that money and and all our responsibility. Uh, and you know, when you have that responsibility, your life is dedicated to it because they will make you or break you. And I've seen uh, over the last few years, just being accountable have helped me increase the numbers because at one point, between 2009 to, you know, to 2014, it was like five years of this terrible business. But the good thing about it, I made a lot of money doing IT work. You know, so it kind of balance, balance out. So we're basically just doing the tours just to do them, taking 12, 13 people here and there, and just you know, keeping the momentum going and documentation. And just thankful to the ancestors. Uh, the ancestors know I'm dedicated to making sure we learn our true story about what happened to us, how we were stolen, and not like look at each other saying, well, our brothers stole us in the slavery and this and that. Just yes. look at things more in depth. Uh, so the journey um, of a lifetime in Africa for African Tours Investment it's just dedicated to us, dedicated to us just connecting and doing things. That's why last time we had an incredible business conference. And my goal was, I was hoping that more and more people have came out and just network a little longer. And I was hoping that the lawyers, they didn't dip off real quick, but uh, we don't, you know, we, you know, when it comes to networking and things, you really have to kind of just bond and not just do business conference and just run out. Uh, and then we do have to keep in touch with each other and keep business connection. So, that's what I've been trying my best to do, and just building the energy with those who want to, you know, come and return to Ghana. Uh, you know, the tour is fine. We're definitely looking for, for a few people who can be leaders, so we can really get things rolling. Because in order for us to really make this thing happen, Africans in the content and Africans in the dancer must form a path of a link. Um, you know, especially when we see the, all the different invader, invaders. You, know, you, have the, you have the Indians coming from one, one angle, and the Chinese, the Koreans, the Japanese. And they're just all working out people in different angles. You have the Lebanese, the other Arabs, you have all kind of other people. So the African continent really need us, brothers and sisters. And I'm not telling anybody that's a good day job will come here. But uh, let's, you know, let's work on plans and you know, we, we can all find other people, different people in Ghana to work with. And you know, so just pushing that out uh, is an encouragement. So that's what we're dedicated to. And got number love for all of our brothers and sisters. And we're gonna keep on working, keeping us strong. And the goal is to dominate this business and expand and expand to where we can have you know full corporate building, let's say Bomani Technology and Africa for Africans, and hire a whole lot of our own people uh, to do administration, uh, tourism, technology, and just many other wonderful things. So, family, uh, that's my introduction of myself and my um, my life in the last uh, 22 uh, years, as far as my experience in traveling. And I just look to this inspire those to come uh, to be young entrepreneurs and this uh, world travelers. So family, appreciate everybody's energy. We keep it strong. Uh, the journey continues.